Hey guys, even here, and I have an interesting topic for you today. We're gonna check how would bodybuilders, the biggest bodybuilders of all time, the most massive ones, look if they stayed classic, if they never grew as much as they have, if they had classic physique category as an option back in their time, if they chose it, if they stayed smaller, how would they look? And so, obviously, we are starting with Dorian Yates. Now, I don't know what you guys think about his physique, but I found his physique very aesthetically pleasing. I may even dare to say classic up until 1993. Later on, especially in 1997, it was a complete disaster when it comes to aesthetics or classic um, lines. But uh, 1993 was the last year when he was very aesthetic. I mean, if you ask me for my opinion, I don't know, maybe you guys have different tastes. Maybe you would say this is disgusting or whatever, but I find this very aesthetically pleasing. And uh, let's even say on a borderline of classic, but that's like the ultimate limit, the, the top limit. But of course, he was huge. This is actually how the mass era started. I mean, he was the original mass monster. So in 1993, he was huge. No way he could fit in the classic physique like this. Not even close. This right here is when he won the British National Championships. He won the heavyweight, but he didn't win the overall. The lightweight bodybuilder actually won the overall that year. But that was actually his bodybuilding debut, his first competition ever. And he won the heavyweight division, so imagine that. And uh, he was actually training only for like a year and a half, I believe. So it's not really fair to use these photos to compare him to the top classic guys of today. He looked great, I mean, very aesthetic if you ask me. But he wasn't as conditioned or as matured or as complete because it was only uh, like a year and a half of training, something like that. He didn't start training seriously before he was 21. So here he was, I think, 23 or something. You can see here that his back was... Uh, actually showing a lot of promise and uh, it became one of the best packs in the world ever and he most certainly was well suited for the open bodybuilding thankfully they didn't have the classic physique and I don't think he would take it anyways but if he did do it how would that look like? well I'm sure his training would be much different he wouldn't really be trying to just grow overall he would focus on his uh, lagging body parts like his arms probably his chest more so than just growing the, the huge back and the huge legs when he was conditioned, he was conditioned. He was huge, but he was still ripped to shreds. But it's much easier to get shredded if you are smaller than if you are 300 pounds in the off-season. So if he did the classic, he would be... He would be shredded to the bone. So that grainy conditioning that pretty much only he had would be carrying him in the classic physique. It is very important. But a small waist, the big arms, the good wheat taper. Was he actually having all that? To an extent, sure. But I think there are other professional, top, mass bodybuilders who, who actually had better aesthetics, better classic physiques than Dorian. But I find Dorian's physique one of the most aesthetic physiques of all time because it spoke power. I like powerful, strong physiques with great conditioning and also very nice lines still. However, before all of his injuries and before he blew up his waist by getting so big, I think he was very classic, very aesthetic. And I think if he decided to do the classic... Uh, on time, he would be an amazing classic physique. He would be like a Hercules. He would represent Hercules ideally. That would be his nickname probably or something. This this photo right here with this jaw, with this jawline, with that hair, with that British face, he absolutely looks like a Hercules. If you ask me, that's how I would imagine Hercules look like. So very aesthetic physique. How would he do in the classic? You tell me. All right, next we have Jay Cutler. Now, of course, I have the older photos when he was younger, but I had to show you this one. This was 2001 Mr. Olympia, which uh, he didn't win, and he, he didn't deserve to win it, but I think this was his best shape ever. He wasn't as conditioned as he was later on, especially in 2009, but uh, the shape that he had, these proportions, this was just amazing. Look at his waistline. He never had this kind of a waistline. The size of those arms compared to waist... And those legs and everything, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. If you love bodybuilding, you gotta love this physique. I don't care what you think. If you don't find this aesthetically pleasing, I don't, I don't appreciate your opinion. You are not a fan of bodybuilding if you don't find this uh, aesthetically pleasing. If you find, I don't know, Chris Bumstead's physique more aesthetically pleasing than this, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You're not a true bodybuilding fan. When I saw this the first time, I was just blown away. Uh, every, anything that I wanted at that moment was to look like this. I would give my soul, I would sell my soul to the devil to, to look like this. Because this was just 
freaking phenomenal. Was it classic, however? Well, it, it wasn't really. It, it was a little bit over the top. Dorian 893, that is the limit. That's the top limit that you can make some kind of argument that it is sort of classical physique. But this is too much. This is bodybuilding. This is not nothing like classic. But if you are a fan of bodybuilding, this is beautiful. Come on. After 1998, 9 and 2000, Mr. Olympia, everybody thought Ronnie would be the king for who knows how many years. And they were right. But nobody really had uh, Jake Cutler ending up second spot, a runner-up at 2001 Mr. Olympia. So he surprised the world, he shocked the world. And I'm sure many people in the audience thought that he should win because of this pose, for example, right here. He was way more aesthetic, way more classic, quote-unquote. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. The judging criteria at that time was uh, much different. So uh, you would always go with mass monster. And Ronnie absolutely blew Jay away with the mass. And from the back, it was a different story. But look at Jay's physique right here. It was very, very aesthetic for such a huge guy. But uh, he was as conditioned as he was in 2009. But his waist was much smaller and the proportions were just freaky looking. Alright, now let's go back in time when Jay was actually classic. Just take a look at him here. I don't know when this photo was taken, but he was actually known for having a little bit too, too big of a waist. Here it doesn't seem big at all. It seems so good. And uh, those abs were really aesthetic. His midsection was always very beautiful. Even when he was at his biggest, those abs were very, very good looking. But then you take a look at those arms. I mean, that's what I'm noticing. Arms, lats, we taper, and that serratus. It just looks amazing. It just looks beautiful. This is bodybuilding. This is classic bodybuilding, if you ask me, 101. I don't know how much did he weigh right here, but I don't know if he was in a weight cap for classic physique. If he was, this would be, this would be much better than Dorian Yates. Because of those biceps. Those biceps are just outstanding. The legs are huge, the waist was small, everything was just flowing so well, so perfectly, back when he was smaller. Right here he was 254, so not even close to, to cutting the weight cap, but uh, very aesthetic physique if you ask me. I loved it, I loved it, up until 2001, but when he was younger it was very beautiful, although later he became super huge, but as he said, he didn't want to get huge, he wanted to win the Mr. Olympia. He did that, he got huge, and he won the damn thing. But when he was younger, when he was in his classical days, he looked very beautiful. He looked like, like he was carved out of marble. He looked like a sculpture, honestly. This was just perfect aesthetics. Now, would he have trouble cutting the weight? I get the impression that he would. So, I don't know how much smaller than this should he get to fit the, the classic physique weight cap. But uh, what do you think? Would he be better than Dorian? I think so. I think he's better classic physique than Dorian, overall. There are some guys like Milos Sharce, for example, my fellow Serbian, and he was always classic, pretty much. This was 1984, I believe, when he beat, actually, Ronnie. Ronnie was 15, he was 14. Later on, Milos also got much bigger to match these guys. But uh, when he was smaller, when he was more aesthetic, he looked overall better. So he was very, very classic. This was him when he was a teenager, pretty much. So you could see the potential that he had. And look at this. I mean, this is just classics all day long. He was classic when he was in open bodybuilding. Just a very beautiful physique. Very, very symmetrical. Super, super symmetrical. Look at those abs. This is just like mirror reflection. But the thing with these bodybuilders, with the open bodybuilders... The problem that they would have, that they would face, if they wanted to do the classic, would be cutting the weight and still looking impressive. I don't think Milos would look uh, impressive like this, aesthetic like this, if, if he, he was much smaller. So he needed this kind of mass. How much was he weighing right here? I don't know. It was probably something like 240, 250. I don't know, to be honest, but uh, it was very, very aesthetic. Would it be as aesthetic and as complete and as beautiful if he was smaller? That's a big question. But as he was back in the 90s in, in the open, he was beautifully aesthetic. And uh, this was him when he was much younger. So as you can see, very, very classical and uh, aesthetic physique overall. Of course, later he wanted to match the other guys with the arm size and with the cow size. And he ruined his physique completely. It was just a disaster. But before that, he was very, very classic, very aesthetic. I'm not sure exactly how much was he over the weight cap in classic physique, but uh, he was very classic with this weight. When it comes to his physique, it definitely wasn't perfect. His biceps are really throwing me 
off because I don't like small arms, small biceps. I like to see very dominant biceps. But uh, he was very aesthetic as he was. I, if he got smaller, he would maybe look more stringy. If he got bigger, he would look less aesthetic. So I wouldn't touch anything. And uh, wherever he fits, he fits. All right, next up we have small Phil hit. Now the thing with Phil hit is he needed some body parts. He was very narrow through the shoulders. So he absolutely needed a lot of mass to make a complete physique. After he gained a lot more mass, he looked much bigger, much rounder, and that looked much more complete, much better. So this was very aesthetic still. I'm sure he would look great with this kind of physique in the classic physique if he stayed that small. And I'm sure this is pretty close to the weight cap in classic. I don't know how much he was he weighing here, but it was probably somewhere around there. And it looks very, very good. He would probably win the Mr. Olympia if he competed like this in the classic physique. Maybe, maybe got a little bit more shredded, but just a little bit. Look at those arms, are just amazing. I mean, this guy is the gift, you know, you know that's his nickname because he's so gifted. The, but for the Open, of course, he would have to get much bigger than this, and he had, and that's why he won the Mr. Olympia for the classic like this. How would he do? What do you guys think? I think this is pretty aesthetic with his small waist and big arms, big legs and everything. Just a little bit narrow shoulders, but for classic physique, I think that would be fine. I think he would do great. All right, next, let's go with the king himself, Ronnie Coleman. Probably the best bodybuilder in the history of the world, most likely, yeah. Uh, I would understand that somebody doesn't find this physique aesthetic because of that uh, midsection. Those abs are looking pretty, pretty bad. But uh, overall, the arms, the fullness of the arms, the lats, the, the wide chest, the, the developed shoulders and, and quads and everything, such a, such a complete physique. I find it perfectly aesthetic. I love it. But here's the problem. Not only the, the stomach, but if you think uh, Ronnie Common in classic physique, you imagine Ronnie Common younger. Now, I would say this physique, but smaller. No, wrong. This is him smaller. This is 1997 Mr. Olympia, a year before he won the throne. And he was obviously much smaller and didn't look that impressive. Why? Because his physique needs a lot more mass than this to look complete, to look aesthetic. He had a huge frame. Thankfully, the ability to build a lot of mass, it just took some time, but apparently this wasn't exactly as good as he was in 1998 or 1999. Those two years, his first Mr. Olympia winning years, were probably his best years ever. I prefer both of them rather than 2003 Mr. Olympia when he came even bigger than this, because this was huge as hell. So, you see what I'm saying, when he's not as big, he doesn't look very complete. Would this be enough to win him the Classic Physique 2019, if he would fit the weight cap? Right here, he was up to 90 kilograms, so that's uh, below 200 pounds. So possibly he was cutting the weight, and he was as conditioned as he got later. With this small waist, actually Ronnie had small waist back in the day, and with those huge arms, and with a pretty complete physique, Possibly, yeah, he would, he would probably win it against Chris Bumstead. It's possible. I'm not sure, but it's possible. Because those arms were just super insane. I love it. I love huge arms. I don't know about you guys, but when I see biceps like this, this is just super aesthetic for me. We should be thankful that Classic Physique didn't exist back then, and that Ronnie didn't choose to stay smaller. He decided to push the envelope as hard as he could, and he became the best of all time. He was huge, he was monstrous, and at some point he was aesthetic. How would he do in the classic? You tell me. Alright, here we have another Mr. Olympia winner who I think would do great in the classic. Who I think would probably choose to stay there. Because he had to go through so much trouble to grow this much. Because he was a very scrawny little kid when he was, before he started bodybuilding, he was very skinny. It took him so many years to grow as much as he uh, grew. So you can see right here on the left photo, he was 180 pounds, which is uh, something like Brion Ainsley. And he looks much bigger and better than, than, than Brion Ainsley. That's a huge 180. He looks huge with that weight. Again, we have a case of dominant arms and those symmetrical abs would definitely help a lot. He is one of those huge bodybuilders who were actually skinny before they started lifting. So they, they all have in common a small waist. So right here you can see how classic he looks. This is beautiful, beautiful physique. Now when I say skinny bodybuilders who were skinny before they started lifting and doing bodybuilding, of course, another bodybuilder comes to mind and that's Flex Wheeler. 
and I've actually made a separate video about this. I said if Flex Filler competed in 2019 in classic physique in 212 and in the open because he would be able to fit all those categories he would win all three of them so classic physique would be too easy for him with this kind of shape with this kind of uh, waistline with those huge arms with you know symmetry he was a sultan of symmetry he would absolutely destroy the classic physique lineup and every other lineup in 2019 for that matter let's mention a couple of more bodybuilders cedric mcmillan Definitely not classic physique. He needs to be huge to look good. This was Cedric when he was 26, believe it or not. So if you are aspiring to become a bodybuilder in the future and it's not really going, just look at this photo. Cedric never gave up and he's one of the top guys today. Kevin Leveroni. In 1992, he was very, very aesthetic. He was much smaller but more conditioned. I like this. I don't know how much he was waiting, but if he was closer to the weight cap like this, he would destroy every single classic physique lineup. Sean Roden, he's amazing, he's very classic with all this mass, but he's also the kind of bodybuilder that needs a lot more mass to look aesthetic, to look good. Here you have Rolly Winkler when he was younger, and he looked amazing, he looked very, very aesthetic. Sean Ray, let's not even talk about his extremely classic physique. Kai Green, Kai Green was one of the bodybuilders that also needed a lot more mass to look uh, as impressive as he looked later on in his life. But uh, it was easy for him to get that big. He was an ultimate genetic freak. Not very classic, though. Not very classic, but uh, very impressive, especially for a youngster. Branch Warren. Branch Warren is notoriously known for not being aesthetic in his later years. But when he was younger, I mean, just look at this. He was, he was dreamy. Now look at the legs. Look at the chest. The, the abs. Just very, very aesthetically pleasing physique. He had a huge potential to be to stay aesthetic, I mean. But he decided to go, you know, the other way, to get huge and to try to win the Mr. Olympia. He came very close in 2009, but he didn't expect uh, Jay to bring his best package ever, arguably, and to take it away from him. And we're finishing this video off with uh, Lee Priest, who was also very, very aesthetic when he was younger. How would he do in the classic? Probably not that well, because this guy needed a lot of mass to look this impressive. But he was very impressive and very aesthetic. You could argue and to say that he was classic because his waist was always looking pretty and his arms were just a little bit too big to say that he's classic, but still, beautiful physique. Anyways, guys, whatever you think, tell me down below. I'm sure you will disagree with many of my comments on this video, but this is just a bunch of my personal opinions. So don't forget to tell me what you think. And I'm sure I forgot a lot of bodybuilders, but if you think of any, mention down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more bodybuilding videos. Thank you very much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.